Craig Harris Jr. Why Jr.? I don't know, because that's what I always call you. You oh, want to okay. just be Craig Harris? I'm Craig Harris. I'm not Junior. Sorry, Craig Harris. Why do I call you Junior? Oh, I, I think I know why. Because hmm. um, for a long time, uh, in the theater, hmm. this guy named uh, John Harris Jr. And okay. I think somehow, da 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 da. So now, you, did you know the other Craig Harris, the writer, the, po the poet, the hmm. writer? Lived up on uh, Fort Washington. No. He died during, during, the, during the, the virus. Pandemic, age thing. Great, good writer, Craig Harris. Mm. Well, I have a question. Are you? It's a musician question. Or maybe it's just a human question. Are you an Eulip a Eulipian? No. But no. But I have greatest respect, uh, Rasan. I just, I just really, you know, greatest respect for him. Well, he, uh, what is the Eulipian? Well, that's what he's. That was his. The woman says that was his tribe. He he he's a Eulipian walking among, you know, other artists. He always hung out with artists and poets and who basically uh, Ross and Roland Kirk. Uh -huh, that's what yeah. it says on, on song of the Eulipian. Yeah, I know so, it. Yeah, they, so yeah. Of course, I know you know it because in the film you just did, everybody t talks about. Well, what, tell them tell them what they talk about. You know what they talk about. The first scene, almost like the first scene. First scene they use. Uh, we use. Uh, an excerpt from uh, the inflated tear, and that was pretty much from the insistence of that was the pillar piece that we worked around for the whole film. The director pitched, in fact, that that was the music that the director pitched to the company. This is the music I want for the film. Mm -hmm. and the record being Shaka King. Shaka King, yeah. Oh, okay. Because you know the, that he pitched that. This is this is he pitched that to us. He and now his directive to us was work with this. It's interesting because everybody I know have seen the film, and of course we're talking about Judas and the Black Messiah, they always say, man, did you hear, you know, they hear the Rasan Roland Kirk, but that's the first, like, people light up with that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, did it inspire you with doing the, I mean, did, how did you work around it? How did you? Oh, did, man, you know, come on, Rasan Roland Kirk is, uh, the, the, first of all, just to have the, the, the whole direction, to have that kind of, you know, in a major uh, company, and to, to be able to uh, to use that sonic path that we were, uh, were we did was incredible, and that comes from the director saying, "I want to go this way," mm -hmm. and it was it was it was very beautiful because that doesn't happen a lot in films. Mm -hmm. And he really was he was very adamant about he knows me all his life, mm -hmm. okay, and he just said, "I want the music that you do." I said, "You know, I want the music that you do." Mm -hmm. I want I want this so-called genre, what we call jazz or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I want I want the ooga booga up in there, big mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so he had, he had he he played. A lot, we talked about a lot of different kind of music and stuff like this. And he was he was said I want some I want this is this is not a fairy tale. I want some edge. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, he he uh, he pitched that to Warner Brothers. And uh, I remember the first time when they first heard it and they came back. Everybody was kind of. Like uptight and tense. Well, this is jarred, like, you know, right? <laughs> they said this is this is very. But uh, my co-composer Mark Isham, mm -hmm. we talked about it, and we went through that. We went through that 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 segment. That was that was the one that kept us busy all the time. How how do we make it palatable? Mm -hmm. I and uh, I want to get back to something you did about the sonic pep, but let's stay on that for just a second. And so, um, a lot of a lot of. Uh, and you have to remember, we did this. The most, the most uh, incredible thing was we did this within the COVID. And we not, we didn't get in the room until uh, we had planned in March, March seventh, eighth. We we intended to be in the studio in New York City with a group of musicians working out different uh, ideas for the film. We didn't get in the studio until August, uh, no September, twenty. Okay, so that's September of last year, 2020. Right. You, used to try to start, you started in March. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Now, when you say... Uh, uh, what did you and Mark Isham, of course, is a very well-known Hollywood com uh, um, film score composer. When you said your works... At, did you change song of the Olympian? I mean, how... What, what, we how, didn't do... What, we, we, it's it's did, inflated did you, tears. Not, you, I'm sorry. Inflated <laughs> tears. Yeah. Did, did you change it? Did, did you re redo it? Did you just use, you just use the, the song? The, uh, he, uh... Shaka, Shaka... 
he wanted he does and they don't we don't use the whole song and then play the tip. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. use part of it. Yeah, yeah. The Rasan part. Uh, I had talked to Dick Griffin about it. Dick Griffin was had worked with Rasan uh, and uh, we talked about it and uh, how he did it, how he was able to do it with just three horns. And then uh, Mark and I submitted several, several, several different kind of different interpretations. Then Mark, and we came up to the uh, fact that uh, the, we decided to use clarinets. And then Mark uh, extended it and, and wrote some strings around it. And so when the company heard it, it was still jarring to them, but they said, okay, we can, we can deal with this. Well, we they're used to the strings, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, well, let's. Uh, I want to go to this. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep in my mind this sonic path, the term sonic path. But I want to deal with it right now. Uh, let's start back with uh, Mark. I, what you, how did you meet Mark? Uh, I should, uh, 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 did you know him before? How, how did you cross paths? How did he, how did he hook up with you? First of all, you have to understand. My name is Craig Harris. I'm a trombonist, composer. For a lot of people, you can go on in the virtual world. You can check me out. I've been around a long time doing this. Uh, I worked with a lot of different kind of people, doing a lot of great music, and uh, that's the beautiful thing about the uh, internet. You can you can you can vet me, mm -hmm. and uh, so I've been around a while, and uh, I've known Shaka King all his life. Mm -hmm. So um, Shaka King approached me about doing this film. He said, "I want you to do the music to this film," mm -hmm. and uh, I said, "Okay." And uh, and I have never worked with in, within Hollywood, you know, so I'm I'm a complete outsider. Mm -hmm. And so Shaka said, okay, now we, we just, we, I want you to, he told him, I want Craig Harris to write the music to this film. Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes from. You know, the director said, I want this person to do it. So they were like, oh, okay. And they would feel more comfortable if you would partner with somebody who's in, in our world. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't that have also to do with commercial value? They know, the inside world knows his name. I'm talking about in those circles, those, those Hollywood circles. So it's, a, it's like an entree also, no? No, it's, it's more so, uh, they have a system. Which, yes. I, which I learned, they have a system. Mm -hmm. They have a, a system. Because if it was about name value, we could have got uh, Jay-Z to write the music. You know, mm -hmm. they, 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 have a, a, they have a methodology that they work with, uh, with film. Film scoring is different from composing. Sure. It's, it's, a different, it's a different genre. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Shaka said, I want you to write the music to this film. So I, I reached out to a couple of people and it didn't work out and then I, I remember, like, I used to tour Europe with my band, and I'd be on the on the uh, road, and I used to be on the trains and listening to music. And I used to always listen to this recording called Tibet. Oh yeah. I used to listen to this recording all the time. Yeah. You just write that, and it was by Mark Isham. Mm -hmm. Mark Isham. And I listened to it, and I listened to it, and I used to listen to it. And then when it came up to, okay, we were trying to find somebody that was uh, really that would be that we first of all that that would really wanted to do the project with me. Not that they just, okay, I gotta do this with this person because I wanna make this money. Mm -hmm. It had to be somebody who really mm -hmm. wanted to work with mm -hmm. me. So I called Mark, uh, I called Mark, and we talked about, I talked about uh, how I enjoyed Tibet and, and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just said, well, are you interested in working with this film? And he just said, I'd be, I'd like to. Mm -hmm. And I, I kinda knew that this was gonna work out because he's a musician. And I'm a musician, so, and we have a lot of similar paths because he always didn't write, he'd just been composing films for the last 20 something years. Mm -hmm. But before that, he was out on the, on the road playing music. And it had to be a musician, it had to be a musician to work with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we decided, he said he would work on it with me. And that was, uh, studio's cool. That, that cools the studio out right away because they have somebody who's been there a long time who knows their systems. Yes, I mean, yeah. And I learned later on that it was invaluable that we had somebody that, that knows their language, mm -hmm. their system. Exactly, exactly. Uh, now, can we go, you mentioned the term sonic path. Tell me about this sonic path that the, that the score, uh, you know, the music for uh, Judas and the Black Panther used. How would you describe it? Okay, as I told you, film scoring is a different genre, and there's not so-called uh, R&B, jazz, hip-hop, all this kind of music. Uh, is 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 different to film scoring, mm -hmm. and so I asked Shaka, "Well, do, do you want a a, a real like uh, prototype like film score, like you know, like great films, the great films like this?" Or he said, "No, I want what we do. Mm -hmm. I, I want to bring the element, the sonic path that we do into into this world." Mm -hmm. And it, because it's not in the films enough. It's not improvised, improvisation, 
so-called jazz, hip hop, or whatever you want to call it. All these terms. It's not in. It's not in films a lot. It's a. There's a. There's a genre. Mm -hmm. And so he said, and he was adamant about it. He said, I'm sticking with this. And he, he, he played me a lot of things. We played a lot of stuff by Max Roach. We played a lot of stuff by Andrew Hill. We played a lot of stuff by Eddie Gale. We played a lot of uh, Marion Brown, Chick Corea. A lot of musicians come from a genre that I'm very knowledgeable about. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay. And so uh, that was that. I have to give him his compliments on that. You know, he said, I'm, "This is the music I want in my film." Mm -hmm. And uh, so we came to it. And uh, when we got down to it, we had to make some compromises, sonic compromises, because the narrative tells everything. You know, uh, I, I write in a, in a sense of uh, the music is first for me, first and foremost. I write and foremost. But I've, I've worked a lot with poets in, in theater and dance, so I kind of gained that skill about like, okay, we're working in another, with another discipline here. And uh, I was able to adapt. And I was able to adapt and learn things from Mark and most of all from a guy named Marvin Morris. Marvin Morris. He's, a, he's the sound editor. He's my music editor. He's the music editor for the film. Mm -hmm. This is a veteran. He's been working with Spike for a long time and other people. The, the, the music editor is invaluable. That's the person that takes your world and puts it into those films. And that's what I learned in it. So, so Marvin was a great help. So I think, and Marvin and Mark, like they were like, woo, when, when I, we played the music, they was like, okay, y'all want to do this? Y'all want to do this? Okay, because they've, they used, they've, they've been working in films. They said, this is different. Mm. But they were able to, uh, to help us get that path to make that path work in that, in that, in that genre. So they knew each other before? They, they, they knew of each other. Yeah, they they had worked, but together. they never worked together. I think they might have worked a long time ago okay, together. Yeah, these, yeah. these two people have worked in Hollywood for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like, you know, uh, Eddie, Eddie, a lot of music didn't make it in the film. But Eddie Gale's piece is in there, The Rain. That's Eddie Gale's piece. Eddie Gale's in it. What, so, scene, what scene is that in? Do you know? Do you know? Uh, that's the scene when they're in the uh, in the restaurant right before uh, the, uh, the the demonstration protest of the protest. Him and uh, the FBI agent are at the table sitting down eating dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we, I mean, we really uh, we stretched it out between between Marvin, Mark, and I. We just we're able to find a, 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 a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to pull. We had to pull back sometimes, and we had to give more. Shaka, Shaka has a great uh, ear for like he likes edgy. He likes edge in his in his in his in his in his sound power. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know that 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 came up a lot of times. Is this edge? Or this have enough edge? Or this or spatial? But at the same time. It was a different score. It was a different than what you hear a lot that comes out of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of people say that. Mm -hmm. Now, did, did you find any, uh, well, I don't want to say surprises, but, but what, what really said, hey, I've learned something from this, from this sort of experience, you know? Oh, yeah. You I know, mean, I know you learn from every everything. Day, but, I, but I mean, Every day. The, 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 I say, Anthony, the, the most important thing I, that I really took away, I was able to build up. I, I learned about the building. Film is probably uh, one of the more collaborative uh, disciplines where you got people sound, lights, camera, action. You got all, and everybody, everything you do affects somebody else. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of talk. There's producers and stuff like that. The music for me, as me, has always been solitary. I, I go in there and I create the music and I come out and do it. No, I don't have anything. This was every time I did something, I had to know it's going to be, it's going to be with hundreds of people going to hear it and have to uh, say so and talk about it. No, and collaborative. It well, you know, I'm audio drama, so you know, I know about collaboration. But, but the thing is, I'm interested in this, uh, I, I, I'll call it a braid, a, a three-strand braid between, you know, the music editor, Mark, and you. I mean, did you, the bond, did, did, if, if we, unto, we, we ha, do we have to have the braid? Or can, can we pull strands apart? I mean... Uh, uh, what do you mean when you say the braid? Like, I mean, I, I think you know, braid is strong. So if you, if, if Mark is, if you, Mark, and, and, and the music editor, and, and uh, you know, are, 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 are working together, you create this braid. So that's right. much stronger than strong. one strand. I was just wondering what you feel about that. I you felt, I felt, I felt, I felt uh, very. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm. I told you it was about the team. <clears throat> Marvin Morris, music editor. 
Mark Mar Mar uh, Mark uh, Isham, co-composer. Jessica McJunkins, contractor, music contractor. Because I needed, I, we hired 70 musicians. A lot of them who were African American. That mm -hmm. we did, we did a whole other thing, and we did everything in New York. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the team. Then there was another. Earl McIntyre was the, pre the preparation, music preparation. Okay, uh, so I think my, my my biggest, the most thing that I walked with, I'm happy, Craig. You knew you you built a team together, mm -hmm. a, a real team. And so w w once we ha you have your team together, then. Mark Isham and I talked a lot about what's going, what's working, what's not working. I'd run things by him, he'd run things by me. we run things by Marvin. And mm -hmm. so it, it all worked, it, it all worked for the best. And, and Shaka was very involved in the music, mm -hmm. you know, like, sometimes we send in a submission in and he'd be like, mm-mm, no. We'd be like, oh man, he said, can try it again. Mm -hmm. Try it again, try it again. We just tried sometimes, like, especially Inflated Tear, that, 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 that like, that drove us crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, so so it was it was it's about building a team and having people like you can work with and work together. I'm not gonna keep you much longer, but I do have to ask you about this team building because people don't understand that uh, Hollywood is about relationships and now you and, and teams. I mean, the classic example I guess is Clint Eastwood. He has the same crew, the same everything. So when he does something, he just flies right on through. Now you just started this. I wouldn't say start this team, but I mean you just, you just became a team player in Hollywood. What, what what what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, and and I forgot also we had another we had another another Quelle and Chris. Those were two. Quelle is a so-called hip hop artist. Mm -hmm. So Quelle was in the team too. Mm -hmm. Quelle. Uh, we don't know. You know this 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 film has really uh, uh, <laughs> shaped itself. Like we had no idea it was it was going to get. We had a new. I knew it was going to get a reception it was going to get because of what's going on social, socially in the world today. Mm -hmm. But the film is really uh, went places where a lot of people didn't think it could go. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, you know, they got the, they got the, uh, the nomination from the Oscars for the, for the best, best film of the year. Mm -hmm. That's big. No, it's huge because that means that's not only you're on the map. Now your phone's going to start hooking up, ringing up, the ding, the ding, the ding, that kind of thing. You know? Yeah, we'll see, we'll see, you know, and that's, and that's, in, and that's in, uh, another guy, another person with the team was Ehab, Ehab Oman, who was my, who was my, uh, my guru with technology because I had to learn all this, this technology within like, I started March. I was aware of it and I worked with it, but I, it wasn't my sole thing that I worked with. So I worked solely with the technology from March until September. No, I don't know what you mean by this technology. Logic. Logic is a music program. Oh, the pro oh okay. Okay, the Logic software, is a yeah, music yeah. program. Yeah. You know, working uh, with Zoom with Mark across 3,000. He's in, he lives in California. Mm -hmm. Marvin is in Denver. Mm -hmm. So we're having, we're having sessions, you know, in three different locations. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I had, I'm, I'm familiar with technology, but... Not like this. I mean, every day, all day, I'm in front of I'm in front of the computer and a and a screen, mm -hmm. and that was that was the beautiful part about this thing. The beautiful part being in front of the screen. What do you mean? Oh no, that you could that pull we it can off. still go, that we can still pull the work pull the work off. Well, yeah, necessity. That's what's happening. These <laughs> a lot of it's going to be done like that. But I guess uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at not you, know, you have some of the team, but you're going to have some of the notoriety because of the film, the success of the film. So that means that. I'm not going to say we're going to lose you, Craig, <laughs> here in New York. We have right here with Marcus Garvey Park. In fact, you said you want you said you want to do a little a concert here in the summer. What's do you have a schedule? In other words, because if it takes that long, then then are you going to divide your time between this kind of film kind of work and and your regular stuff? What's going to happen? You know? I'm going to press on what I've been doing, Anthony. Mm. You know, if the film stuff comes through, I, I can do it. But but my main, uh, I play trombone. I'm an improviser, and I'm gonna do what I do. Mm. And you know, I'm gonna do everything that I do. And if those if those things come along, good. I be it's beautiful, cause mm. because and I think uh, Shaka and uh, Ryan Coogler and uh, Charles King, and they, you know, that's 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 the first time that there's been a production, all African American production that's been uh, nominated for Best Picture of the Year in mm. history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, we 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 need to stay. You know, unilateral. We don't we don't stop one thing. Come on, you don't you don't stop one thing to do. We unilateral. We do unilateral everything. So I'm gonna be doing my concerts in the church in Harlem on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. And if a film score comes through, I'm gonna be doing that in the house. I'm doing everything I can do. No, yeah, okay. You know, okay. staying centered. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's like that now. Uh, this is not well. Tell us. Uh, um, 
I, I guess I should end this proper here, but I don't want. I want to just keep on going. Tell us about since you mentioned. Tell us about the church and how you started that because that's very important. And you know, I have certain interest in in that. But go ahead. No, no, no. It's, it, Anthony, I'm a community person like you. I'm a community. It's about you know. I come. I come from people that it's about. We have to take care of home. The, the community is is important, and that's a good part about the pandemic because mm -hmm. now we have to do work in our own community. We don't have to fly three thousand miles away. We need to do the work right here in our community. That's that's for, that's basic for me. That's always been big. That's what feeds me. That's what makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. a, a while ago, in fact, I was. I guess the reason I brought that whole Ulipian thing in the beginning because I think, think of it as community, but working with not not the downtrodden, but everybody. When you do your morning walk that time and, and the people out there giving out the sandwiches and you pick up stuff for elders in the community, that kind of thing, you still do. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not saying other people don't do that, but it's not, it's not, I don't even think it was the pandemic that caused that. You naturally do that, don't you? I mean, you, they know you in this community. Yeah, right, and it's about, it's, about, it's about having this. Anthony, ain't nothing like walking from my house over to the parlor and perform. Mm. There's nothing like, that. you know, you walking two, three blocks to the, instead of getting on a train or stuff like that. And it goes back to Fela. When I was in Nigeria, Fela lived not far from the shrine. So Fela be in the bathtub, and he could hear the band, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, he could hear the band and he just walk over there, like mm -hmm. just walk over there and be normal. Or like Yusindor, when he had Chosan in Senegal. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, this is an international artist, mm -hmm. but he's home, so like, he's in the Chosan every night when the band's off, they play at midnight. And he just walking through the audience and oh, yeah. they be like, uh, Yusindor, uh, Yusindor, I need, I was at his club in Dakar. It was amazing. I it was unbelievable because they started very slow. Not they wasn't even there. The DJ I'm dancing on the floor by myself, and then all of a sudden things start to happen. About two, three o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden everybody is amazing. Let me ask you something. This I'm staying on this community field now. I, I know you you started with Ross and Roland Kirk. So what's I mean? Is this an ev not an evolution, but is this a continuation of this? What did you learn from? Uh, no, I'm talking about a, a sunrise. Is this a, a, a is this a, a continuation of that? What did you learn in, in, in your travels? I, I'm assuming now you're at, not say the top of your game, but you're, you're ensconced really in your game. But what has informed this game right now? Do we uh, right now? Uh, consistency, consistency, consistency. Uh, it is no, there's no like. For a lot of other people now, it's beautiful. A lot of other people hear my name be in other circles now. My circle has broadened, but I'm the same old Craig Anthony, and, and it's the, the work, the struggle continues. The same work I started 30 years ago. It's just, it just you just constantly reshaping, reinventing oneself. It, it, it's a continuum. It, it's not. It's nothing new. It's, we just continue this work. We up here. We did. You and I was doing this somewhere. 30 years ago. You had a camera somewhere and I was sitting in front of you was having the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's about the continuation and the connection. It's like you in South Africa now, we got people in Dakar, we got people in Ghana. For me, it's about just connecting this connecting these tribes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the big thing. When, when you mentioned it, Tony, you said, well, you know what, I said, I don't know, I work with the, I work with the kids <laughs> like right. five years right. doing the Pan-African Space Station. But here's the uh, one, one last thing, hopefully, one last thing, because you know, I tend to lie with these kind of things. Oh, but see, well, Anthony, it's no problem because I'm right near my house and you're right near where you live. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's like, like we didn't have to go. We're up, we up here on top of Marcus Garvey Park. Mm. We're we home. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Let's, let's stop here because I really enjoyed this. I want to do two things. One, I want to say that uh, I, I'm going back. To, you know, I live in a village in South Africa now. I'm not okay. in a big city. And I, I should be back in July. I'll be here the whole summer. And you give this concert here, I'll be there, you know, the yeah. church, I would, yeah, that, that kind of thing. But I want to, I have to thank you on camera once again because the last real big audio drama I did in New York before I left in 97, you know, well, left big kind of things like that in the city or BAI was uh, Glorious Monster and the Bell of the Horn. Right. And I told you this before, <laughs> it was so funny because I was trying to explain. The, the, the musical director, I suppose, the guy Wade Barnes. I never worked with him, uh -huh. and we, I was down at City Hall, uh, City College. And I was trying to explain to him, and you happened to walk by, mm. <laughs> and, and he was just be bewildered. And you say, "Oh, that Anthony's crazy. Come on, let's talk musician talk." So you just took him away, mm. and it was amazing. I said, "Oh gosh, good." <laughs> but Dumas, man, that's 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 a mess. That's somebody else in my life, big. That I just been just, re you know, I, this man's work, man, is just, uh, woof. Well, Andy Dumas, yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, that that was what's that was um, uh, Larry Neal, his piece. But I do have a piece for the church. We can talk about it in in, uh, in, in July when I get back. I'll have it out for you. Very easy. It's not nothing. Nothing you all have to do. You have to change anything. But it's really kind of interesting.
Yeah, yeah, I okay. think you fit in the church. But you know, Anthony, it's about it's about us keeping in contact. You know, you know that look what you like about four or five thousand miles away. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's these days, things can be done. You know, it's so beautiful now. That's the beautiful thing about this working in this film thing. I, and I came in very, very gracious and very fortunate with my team and stuff like that. But to be able to come in at the top tier to see how they do this thing in the mm, top tier, oh, the okay. top tier, like to okay. go to Manhattan Center. You know, I, I grew up in Manhattan Center. I've seen mm. so many concerts in Manhattan Center all my life. Mm. We recorded 70 musicians in Manhattan Center mm. with in the middle of the pandemic. The, all, all the musicians were like 40, 50 strings. They were all 15 feet apart. Mm -hmm. And then they had the woodwinds were all in cubicles. Mm -hmm. You couldn't touch the music because it was in uh, plastic things like this because, mm -hmm. you know, this was like in the heat. And I said, this is, and I saw the future. I said, this is where this, is where this thing is going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. this is where this thing is going. Once again, Craig Harris. Oh, Harlemite, world citizen, blah, 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 blah. Thank you so much for this. Boom.